Welcome to Laval Stadium here at Stony Brook University. We are getting set for the Stony Brook Seawolves against the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Our first face-off coming your way after these messages here on Flow Sports. Welcome back to Laval Stadium here at Stony Brook. Seawolves set to take on Sacred Heart in their fourth game of the season along with the coach, Tim Tuttle. I'm Sam Biederman. Glad that you're with us. It's going to be a good one today, Tim. As we start in the face-off X, it is Wens Conlon to take for Stony Brook opposite Nikki Cassano. And the first draw ends up going the way of the Seawolves. They will get to work offensively. Yeah, not the start you want. You don't want to vol violate on the first one. That's been an area where Sacred Heart has struggled this season at the X, looking to turn that around today. The Pioneers 0-3 on the season. Still looking for their first win. Meanwhile, Stony Brook 1-2. They won on Friday against Air Force, Tim. An impressive showing. Yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, Seabulls played a complete game. Uh, Coach Lardy was saying there's a good shot there by Maya Anderson. Uh, good save. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, they played a complete game, though, but, hey, you know, it's a quick turnaround. Uh, you know, uh, Sacred Heart's looking to uh, get in the scoreboard in the win column, I should say. Uh, so it should be a good one. Sacred Heart looking to clear. The Pios move into the attacking zone and get to work opposite the Stony Brook defense that played extremely well against Air Force, holding Air Force nearly scoreless for that second quarter. That was where it really turned the tide and they ended up going to the halftime break with a big lead yeah yeah I mean I think the was like I said played a, a really really good first half the second quarter was kind of you know a little sloppy on both sides uh, uh you know for Air Force and uh the Seawolves um but you know give give the, Se the Seawolves credit they really had a good week of practice they got everybody a little bit back uh being healthy uh which is important First shot of the game for Sacred Heart, and it's saved down low. Jamison McLaughlin makes his first save of the day. Yeah, really nice save, Jamison dropping down to get that one. Uh, both goalies hot uh, early. Jamison McLaughlin, the goalie for Stody Brook, in the cage for Sacred Heart. Alex Pazienza, who has been their main guy dating back to the end of last season. Stony Brook back to work. A little bit of a new look for the Seawolves offensively this season. Noah Armitage moves back to the midfield with the ball right now. The veteran Will Button controls out near the 35-yard line. Of course, there's Matt Anderson, the Canadian staple in his fifth and final <laughs> season. And then you get the two transfers alongside Dylan Palanetti. Jonathan Huber comes in from St. John's. Blake Balin from Long Island. The first shot of the game for Huber. And it goes top shelf as the lefty rips it to make it one nothing. Stony Brook. Yeah, this is a great look by Noah. He's you know, coming over the top. Not a, not a, not a tremendously hard dodge, uh, but he splits the left to the right. And um, you get the defenseman. Hedging a little bit to the crease, uh, Jonathan Huber wide open on the backside, catches and finish. Jonathan Huber, the transfer from St. John's. Tim, you and I were talking about it before the game. He's going to let it fly when he gets his opportunities and he catches in. No, absolutely. I mean, with Dylan and him, I mean, both big lefty strong shooters. I mean, uh, you know, it's a great job by, by Noah dodging uh, over the top from right to left and, and, you know, feeding that ball back to his left to find Huber wide open. I think the defender there was hedging a little bit, but... Uh, he probably didn't need to get to the crease. Uh, so Jonathan Huber with the first goal of the game for Stony Brook. And now Sacred Heart will look for a response. Jake Ward moving in. One of their better players this season. He moves it to Jake Garb. Rotation back to the near side. Johnny Morgan with it. Picked up by Michael DeSanto, the impressive true freshman who has worked his way into the starting lineup defensively for Stony Brook. Carson Spooner behind the cage. Garb shouldered out. Able to find Ward again. Jake Ward out of Colorado. Sweeping back outside. Well played by Dan Newton. Spooner steps uh, into the shot that. and he's got a goal for Sacred Heart. Carson Spooner with an answer. Yeah, this is fairly simple. It's a dodge to the right side. He comes over the top. You see Christian Loud gets a little caught. Uh, he comes off. There's a little not very good communication between uh, Christian and Mike Sabella there. They leave the backside guy open. He catches it, steps down the alley, and buries it. Carson Spooner, the senior from California, his fourth goal of the season. Coming off of a two-goal performance in Sacred Heart's last game against Fairfield. And we're all knotted up one-to-one -one early in the first quarter. 
Yeah, a little bit of a push there. I don't know, a little ticky tackish. I think they should let them scrap it out there, Sam. You know what I mean? The official uh, thought it was from behind, though. But that, that's a great answer uh, by Sacred Heart to come down. You know, um, again, they're struggling at the faceoff effect. So far, they're scrapping. Uh, I think it's 3 2 um, in the, in the uh, advantage area of uh, faceoffs for the Seawolves. So if they can keep that cl uh, close, uh, expect a good game uh, from Sacred Heart. A turnover by Stony Brook. Seawolves unable to link up there as the pass gets scooped up by the Pios, and here they come the other way looking to clear. Yeah, that's that's two possessions by the Seawolves. That they're, they're playing fast. I understand that Coach Gladi and Coach Chanachuk, uh, you know, promote that as well, though. But, you know, after a goal from the other team, I think you want to get more of the possession there. You know what I mean? I think they kind of forced it there uh, on that exchange. So Sacred Heart looking to get off to a hot start offensively, something that they haven't had. They offense have been at a premium to start the year, Tim. Yeah, I uh, mean, you know, and then talking to Coach Bass, it is backside look wide open again. Uh, Goal again for the Pios, and this time it's Jake Garb. They've taken it early, two to one lead. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, again, a mistake here by Newton. I mean, he comes off the back pipe, a simple do alley dodge. Uh, Estrella does a great job with an early slide there by Desano, and and oh well, Newton had to come as the two. Uh, and there he was sitting on the back pipe for an easy finish. Well, how about this for Sacred Heart, which has rarely led this season. It's Jake Garb who cashes in his third goal of the year. Yeah, it's a great job by Garb. And we, like I said we, I mean, before the goal, uh, we were talking to Coach Bassey about offensive flow, right? Uh, you need the ball to do that, right? So you got to win some faceoffs, right? you got to clear the ball very, very well. So... Um, Brent's Conlon moving in, and he's got a shot right off the face-off X for a goal. <laughs> There's How many times have we seen that from Reds throughout his career? Right down Broadway, and it's 2-2. Two to two. Yeah, absolutely. Reds does a great job, obviously, popping it to himself out in front. Uh, he sprints right down. You know, Sacred Heart's defense is a little stretched. And uh, right down Broadway, Reds, uh, Reds buries it. Not known for a shooter, right? But we'll take it. And a great job by the Seawolves to answer. Well, we've already got four combined goals, less than five minutes into this one. 2-2, two to 10-39 two, to play in the first quarter. Locked up in the face-off X. Conlon wins another one, trying to get out of traffic. Christian Loud dispossessed. And Sacred Heart controls the ground ball. Alex Pezienza, the goalie, able to distribute. And the long poles advance it past midfield. Here they come with Brandon Sweeney. Yeah, that was a great check by Barkas on uh, Christian Loud there. He picked the ball up, a good check. Ball pushes out to the goalie. Uh, Sacred Heart pitches over the top for a nice, easy clear. Johnny Morgan controlling number 24. Plays it behind the goal. Jake Ward, patient at X. Yeah, we got Newton hung up here a little bit. Dan Newton now shading Ward. Switching hands, spinning onto the doorstep. Missed it off the pipe. And a whistle as he was inside of the crease. Yeah, so they're, they're, that, they're calling. He wasn't forced and he wasn't pushed from behind by the defender. He just lands in the crease. Uh, so that's a turnover going Seawolves. You know, that's that fine line we were talking earlier, Sam, about that, you know, the new rule of if you're, you know, pushed in by the uh, defender, uh, there's a flag, but as long as the ball goes in before you land, it's a goal. If you make contact with the goalie, it's no longer a penalty against the offensive player, as long as they were pushed by the defender. New rule in college lacrosse this season as Stony Brook looks to get back on top. Blake Balin, the transfer. Outside to Noah Armitage, over to Caleb Pearson. Matt Anderson around the screen. He'll reset with less than 40 to shoot. Pearson moving behind the goal. Flips it out for Armitage, winds and fires, and Pazienza is there to save it on the near post. Yeah, good save by Pazienza, nice and solid in the goal. Uh, you know, you, you like to catch those high to high, but it's okay if they go off your body. Good ride by Armitage. Armitage on the ride, Jack Ramsey unable to clear. And that's gonna reset the clock to 82, Sam. Fresh possession for Stony Brook. Renz Conlon tied it up with a goal from the faceoff X. Went right down the middle. <laughs> but Sacred Heart, a surprise 2-1 lead before that. This team trying to get its first win of the season. Anderson moves in, and his shot goes wide. Huber trying to pick up the rebound. Candelino can't clear it. And great Dylan job. Palinetti regathers. It'll be another fresh 80 for the Seawolves. Yeah, that's a great job by Balin and Dylan. You know, the ball's on the ground. I mean, as an attack, guys, you want to ride hard and keep the ball on your side of the field. Palinetti rips it, saved by Pazienza. 
Ooh. Ooh, dangerous yeah. play back to the goalie, <laughs> but he's able to clear it out top. Ben Palanchi moving into midfield. Absolutely. That's one of those, uh, you know, okay, we got away with it. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Tight <laughs> moments in coaching. Um, but a uh, great job by Penzienza. I mean, he's played well so far. Able to make that save on Paladetti, who had 10 points in the win against Air Force on Friday, a career high. Uh, Dylan was was unbelievable, you know, and, and really developing his games, right? Known out of high school as a, as a big-time lefty shooter. Uh, it's a credit to Coach Chanachuk and Coach Galati uh, getting Dylan to uh, de uh, develop his game and become uh, more de uh, diverse. Sal Michio, the top goal scorer for Sacred Heart, gets rid of it. Behind the net, Carson Spooner. His little invert here. Spooner oh, in front. Luck. Great feed. Sacred Heart back on top. Yeah, that's a great little look there. Uh, you know, they got to invert uh, David Estrella here, right? And, and you know, you have Newton. He's the slide guy. This is called mirroring, right? Uh, it's a great job. To def you know, Tackman drives hard right-handed. His crease uh, teammate, he mirrors him. Uh, the slide comes. Dump right to him, and it's 3-2. Uh, Sacred Heart. Jake Ward with the finish. Yeah. Fifth goal of the season for the sophomore from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Yeah, it's a great two-man game. So you talked about finding some flow for Sacred Heart. Unable to do that at the X right now, but offensively, they have a little bit of rhythm midway through the first quarter. Yeah, now you got to be a little careful here for Casano, right? That's two violations, right? The next one is going to be a 30-second foul every time after that. So, you know, Sacred Heart struggling at the face effects to start the season. Not the exact, and remember, it's for the half, too. You know what I mean, Sam? So uh, he cannot violate the rest of the half. So that puts a little apprehensive. Might give Renz the advantage there a little bit. Nikki Cassano, the face-off man for Sacred Heart. Keep an eye on that the rest of the way. Dom Gonzalez with it for Stony Brook. It's a great check by Hula there, getting the ball on the ground. Balin fires, and Pazienza has it in his stick. Nice save. Oh, there's a big-time mistake right Back there. clear, Palinetti, the plenty of space, and yeah. he will catch that in all day, twice on Sunday, 3-3. Three to three. Yeah, Pazienza did a good shot with a big-time save here. I think he rushes the clear right away. You know, uh, you get those four seconds, you want to use them. And listen, you, you, you give <laughs> Dylan Palinelli from, you know, eight yards out, that's going to be the goal every time. So there's a, a slight mistake. You know, that cost Pazienza, who's playing very, very well, you know what I mean? Uh, but, uh, again, communication, we talked about clearing the ball, poise, you know. Uh, Coach uh, Basti said it yesterday about just, just let's relax, clearing the ball. Let's not try and make the big play. Well, it's the 11th goal of the season already for Dylan Palanetti. Six goals against Air Force on Friday, tying his career high, which he actually had in his debut against Sacred Heart. Remember, partner, we had that game together. Paladetti's first game at Stony Brook after transferring from Maryland. And he poured on six against Sacred Heart and what would eventually become a 20 to eight win for Stony Brook two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it's, I mean, it's just a mistake pipe. You know, like, it, it, you know, if you get a, teams are gonna make mistakes and you make them pay, it's gonna, you know, it could turn into a long day for you, right? So you can control what you can control, right? I mean, Penzian knows that, right? It's just about moving on to the next play. So Coach Bassey and the defensive coordinator expressing that to him, like, hey, listen, you gotta let it go. Uh, you gotta move on from it. So it's a long game. Palinetti way out front for Huber, and Pazienza saw it the entire way. Nice stop. Yeah. Way to get back on the uh, the uh, winning side there. You know, a nice easy save too. That's high to high from about 18. Uh, Division one goalies, you know, they're they're going to get that every time. Oh. Sacred Heart across the midfield line. Carson Spooner with it. Sal Michio. Johnny Morgan. We'll leak out to the near side and wait for reinforcements of the attacking zone. Ryan Sto Stout joins the attack. Spooner behind the net. Back out front, Morgan. Pressured by Christian Loud. Michio working on Michael Sabella. Only 25 on the shot clock for the Pios. Shot, not there. Knocked away, Ryan Stout couldn't finish. And Sacred Heart will have it in the corner, 19 to shoot. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, Sacred Heart didn't go back. Here they are right now with the, with the big little, a little bit of mirror here, right? Shorty against Shorty at X, Ben Morshauser. Uh, let's see if we can 
break it down. There's that look again. Oh, they almost missed. had it. Yeah. Carson yep. Spooner with a spin move, but the ground ball picked up by Sabella. Long pole moving in. He's got space to work. Michael Sabella dishes to Huber, who's saved by Pazienza. <laughs> Coach Kalani with his hands. I don't know if he's trying to keep his ears warm or he's a little <laughs> a little frustrated with that shot by Uber. But, uh, you know, you just played a, a decent amount of defense. Uh, again, you're getting the most of your, uh, your possessions. And, like, you know, Coach Bassey's worried about you getting good offensive flow. Uh, he's looking for a timeout. Yeah. Oh, wait. John Basti, the head coach yeah. for Sacred Heart. He's upset about something. Talking with the official on the near side. <laughs> and it looks like he finally got a timeout. With yeah. 3.51 to play in the first quarter. Right. Along with Tim Tuttle, Sam Niederman here. And, and Tim, we finally have a little bit of a chance to catch our breath. Both these teams come blazing out of the gate. And Sacred Heart takes the timeout here late in the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it's a settlement timeout. I think Coach Bassey was trying to get the official to notice that there was maybe too many Sewells on the field. I counted six, uh, so I'm not sure what he was uh what he was speaking with the official about. And then, hey, he said, you know what, let's get a timeout here. I need to catch my breath, I guess. Um, but, yeah, a good start. I think it's a good start by both teams. I think a little forcing it uh, uh, offensively for the Seawolves. Uh, you know, and, and a little miscues there by, by Sacred Heart, though. But a good, solid start to the game. You look at our keys to the game, Tim. Tunnels, tips. Got a little bit of a chance here to install these. What are you looking at for both of these teams? Well, you know, for Stony Brook, right, it's a quick turnaround, right? And talking to Coach Galati yesterday about the CAA championships, right? You're going to play two games within three days, right? So he, he, it was a method to his madness about scheduling these games together, right? How will the Seawolves handle that, right? So far, you know, they started off really hot against Air Force. They're kind of a little pressing it right now, and that could be a little bit of a factor. Uh, and for Sacred Heart, it's finding the offensive flow. I think Coach Bassey, uh, being 0-3 is tough, but I think he's extremely uh, positive about where the team is heading. Right, It's about cleaning up little things, too. Uh, he did mention about the face-off acts, right, getting the ball to the offense to create flow. Clearing the ball cleanly create flow, right? So all those opportunities to win if, win if the X and then also clear the ball comfortably, all right, it's going to give your offensive team a lot more chances to have uh, offensive flow. Well, you see the top four there for the Pios. Ward, Garb, Spooner, and Michio there in red. Johnny Morgan has it, number 24, coming out of the timeout. 3-3. Three to three. Dylan Palanetti scored a goal off a mistake on the clear. And we are tied, heading down the stretch of the first quarter. Yeah, and I, you know, Sam, I think that if we, if we look at the end of the first quarter, the stats, I'm sure the score being 3-3 currently, if we look at the faceoffs, they're probably close. I think Rens might have one or two more, but they, but they, it's, I'm sure it's not a big gap. You know, it's not like, you know, Renz is, uh, you know, you know seven for six or you know, six, or six for seven. Well, you know, I think it's a little closer there, and uh, hence what, that's where the score is where we're at. Again, I, I would look, well, now they're in a, they're in a one four set here. Attacking the wings here a little bit by Sacred Heart. 14 on the shot clock for Sacred Heart. Gar behind the goal for Ward. Only six to shoot. Trying to throw it in front for Ryan Stout. That's not going to cut it. Ground ball picked up by Michael Sabella. Full head of steam. Stops and gives it up to Dylan Palanetti. And this time the Seawolves will slow it down. <laughs> yeah, good decision. Good decision there by Dylan to pull it out. Take the air out of it a little bit. Uh, coming out of the timeout there, I, it looked like Sacred Heart was trying to get a little inside pick game going on uh, out of a timeout. It didn't really set up until like really late in the shot clock. So uh, maybe that's, again, you know, maybe Coach Bassey's thing is like, hey, let's get some touches, create a little bit of flow because we haven't touched it in a lot in three games uh, to maybe, you know, get a good feel for his offense. Palanetti tried to twist it on net. It's behind. It stays with Stony Brook. Two and a half minute mark, first quarter. Alex Pazienza, the goalie for Sacred Heart, already has seven saves in this first quarter. Will Button moving in. Great this luck. is off Armitage with the finish. It's a great look by Will Button. Noah Armitage right on the doorstep. And Stony Brook has the lead again, four to three. Yeah, Matt Anderson takes a little alley dodge, right? Comes over the top. But that there's the, there's the finish by Noah there. Uh, but Matt Anderson kind of an alley, uh, wing dodge came down towards the goal, threw back to Button. Button comes over the top. The one slide comes, but the two slide doesn't get to the crease. Noah's standing there wide open, and he buries it. Noah Armitage, the Canadian who has been converted to a midfielder this season, scored a goal late against Air Force. He's on the board early against Sacred Heart. 
And Stony Brook has a lead again, 4-3. to 2.18 to play in the opening quarter. Yeah, Coach Bassey, after the second violation by Carson went with Palencia again against Renz. And, you know, Renz being a face-off guy, he's going to, you know, win it to himself pretty much every time. So it might be a little bit of a longer half here uh, for Sacred Heart at the face-off X. Palanchi, the long pole, he did have a little bit yeah. of face-off action against Fairfield. But right now, Stony Brook controlling that area of the game. They're 7 out of 8 on face-offs. Okay. So I was wrong before. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're grinded out. So, hey, you know what? In that case, right, if you're not winning face-offs, you're getting stops. Okay? Uh, so it's it's uh, it's a tremendous um, uh, credit to Paz uh, Pazienza to make sure, you know, he gets some saves. There's another one. Shot by Derek Tack is saved away by Pazienza. Palanchi. Trying to dig it out. Get some help from his teammates. Ramsey with it. Knocked on the near side by Gonzali. It's a great ride. It's a great ride. You know, like I said before, uh, Sam, you know, if you're not winning faceoffs, you've got to get stops. And, you know, Pazienza is keeping him in the game here. You know what I mean? It's a one goal game with that differential. You know, eight out of seven, excuse me, seven out of eight faceoffs was by Renz is tremendous. Trying to get it to Ronnie Kramer, the true freshman, but Palanchi with the interception. So here comes Sacred Heart. Oh, be careful sliding upfield. Both Sabellas upfield if they can get it to the wing. Caden oh, Brodnex unable to get it. Big tangle up there. Christian Loud was in the middle of all of that. That's a good that's a good Oh, that's a mistake by the official because it was Christian Loud who was holding up uh Newton, not not the Sacred Hawk player. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stony Brook will try and take advantage. Palanetti uh -oh. moves in and scores. Dylan Palanetti capitalizes. Mm. Five to three to the Seawolves late in the first. Yeah, it's a great job by Dylan playing fast, right? Right down uh, that left wing there. Nobody comes to him. And listen, you, 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 you got to put your hands on uh, Dylan Palanetti. He's just such a great shooter. He can shoot with some with guys on him, let alone with his hands free. Second of the day for Dylan Palanetti. Stony Brook's top scorer came in here two years ago after transferring from Maryland. Local kid from Ward Melville High School in East Setauket, just down the road. And we're back to the faceoff X. It'll be Nikki Cassano again against Conlon, but Conlon wins. Unable to keep it moving in. Yeah, you know what? There's been a, a bunch of faceoffs so far, so far, Sam, that. Uh, uh, you know, the ball's on the ground and Sacred Hearts didn't, didn't pick it up. You know what I mean? I think the balance would be a little bit more closer uh, if they pick up some ground balls. Uh, the other thing, too, is that's a great job by Dylan playing fast after a turnover in the middle of the field to uh, put the Seawolves up by two. 5-3 start for Stony Brook. And a whistle They're going off. the other yeah. way. 13 yep. seconds offside on S Sacred Heart. Last chance, Sabella Huber couldn't handle it. And that should do it for the first quarter with six seconds to go. Pazienza behind his net, looking to get it over to Candelino. And the clock running again. Long throw down. That's at the other end. <laughs> we'll and do, we'll 1. do it again on this side. seconds <laughs> left. Yeah, Hail Mary's all over the place. <laughs> you know, well, that rule changed a few years ago, Sam. Is if is It's in the air and it goes in when the clock goes off. It counts. So a good first quarter on Long Island. Stony Brook takes a 5-3 early lead over Sacred Heart. We'll be back after these messages. Second quarter coming your way on Flow Sports. Back here at Stony Brook. About to begin the second quarter. Stony Brook up 5-3 on Sacred Heart. Sam Biederman along with Tim Tuttle and the rest of our terrific crew. Tim, looking at this second quarter, and we're back in the face-off X where Stony Brook has dominated to begin the big yeah, game. Yeah, no, and I, and I got to correct myself on that mistake, though. What, what, in, in turn, like we said before, if you're not winning face-offs, you got to get stops. And Pazienz has done a great job of keeping, you know, Sacred Heart in this game. You know, it's only a two-goal lead. Uh, not ideal, not ideal, right? Because you still have the the violation situation here. If, if Cassano violates that, we're going to go to a 30-second penalty. And I'll be honest with you, watching Stony Brook's man up from Friday, you, you don't want to put that man up. Well, Nikki Cassano able to win this faceoff cleanly as the ground ball is picked up on the run by Sacred Heart. And they will move into the attack. Ben Palanchi working as a shorty here. Christian uh, Loud, he, he'll, he's going to hunt you down. He's not going to let any freebies. 
Uh, hey, I got to bring up something about the so Paul Cocatera, one of our colleagues, right, brought up the other day on his game um, that uh, you know he'd like to see a new stat, right? Where yeah, you have a face-off win, so the face-off guys wins it, wins that wins the face-off, the draw, I would say, right? Right. And then who gets possession? Right, because right. you can win. You can the Rens can win every face off and push it out. Does he pick the ball up? Right, does does he was pick the ball up? So uh, I thought that was un, uh, kind of unique, uh, you know, stat that could probably could be really um, charted uh, simply in the lacrosse game. Finishing the play, getting the whole face off unit yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, winning the winning the draw is one thing, right? But you like see, you saw right there, right? Rens popped it out, right, and they, they scrapped it, or Cassano pops it out and they scrap it out, and who picks the ball up, right? So it's like two aspects uh, of the face off game. Sacred Heart going to work to start the second quarter. Going to capitalize off of that face-off win. Jake yeah, I, Ward. Yeah. I, okay. Tend to shoot. Big rip, but to no avail for Ryan Stout. It will stay with the Pios. Only nine on the shot clock. Can they get something here late? Shot yeah. clock is running. They're going to run some guys off here. I think they're just going to do the best they can to play, you know, six on four here, uh, Sacred Heart, because they know the shot clock's running. So they, they're looking to prevent any transition going forward. Uh, I would like to see the offensive flow there by Sacred Heart. It seems like the Seawolves are coming very early on their slides, right? So get that ball out of your stick, right? Let's throw into the slide, uh, I like to call it, right? You're dodging. A slide comes, creators, you know, the guy playing you goes away. Move the ball, man. Get that ball moving hot. Try to catch the Seawolves on the back end with a mismatch or, you know, someone wide open on the back side. So now Stony Brook trying to build on the 5-3 to three lead. They scored three unanswered to end the first quarter. Couple from Dylan Palanetti. Go to work with that first midfield line. Anderson, Button, and Armitage. It's Matt Anderson circling in front. Shot just behind the net. I don't know if Pazienza got a save there, but it looked like that to me. But wow, they really give up the middle of the field, which is a dangerous spot. Matt Anderson come over the top. Uh, oof. Uh, you know, uh, Sacred Heart held their slide there, but I hope that's a great look. Blake Balin had it to Dylan Palanetti, but he had it knocked out at the last second. Now slashing hard yeah, as David Barkis tries to clear, and the penalty flags down. Uh, push with numbers here with the pole. Sacred Heart in transition. Oh, shoot that big. Oh, look at the trailer. Trailer. Good Shot. Save. Huge save by McLaughlin, sacrificing the body. <laughs> and now that Stony Brook gets possession, will finally be able to check on the penalties from behind the play. Yeah, it looks like Dylan uh, is going to get called for a slash on the back. This is the end of the uh, the shot there, and a great shot by by Jameson here. Uh, Way to get down and get it. Uh, but yeah, uh, Dylan on the ride there was, you know, uh, hacking a tree up uh, in East of Talkett in his backyard. His, <laughs> his old man said, "You got to work on your shoulders and your and your uh, and, and your, <laughs> and your bicep." But you, that's good in your backyard, you know, Dylan. But you can't do it in the game. A little wood chopping there. Yeah, right, right. So the penalty. Odd Stony Brook. Yeah. They're going to have to kill this off. Man up opportunity for Sacred Heart. Dom Gonzalez called for a 30 second penalty. Oh, wow. I thought it was Dylan. Oh. And Paladetti oh, is two. there as well. So two. two men down. Yeah. So it was the push late. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right, Sam. It was a push late after the shot, uh, during the shot. And then uh, obviously dealing with uh, the slash on the back end on the right. So two 30 second penalties. The push on Gonzalez and then slashing. There's a on woman Paladetti. Yeah. Yeah, so it's one, a one minute. minute yeah. All right, they announced 30 initially, but yeah. so it's going to be one minute on Palinetti. So at least one minute of a man up for Sacred Heart, but they will start 30 seconds, six on four. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and they're both releasable. Uh, so if they, you know, Sacred Heart scored a goal here, both with penalties would be released. See if the Pios could take advantage. Six on four opportunity, trailing by two early in the second quarter. A little open set here to a 2 3 set. Want to keep that ball hot, especially on man up, man. Find that open guy. Tucker Spencer moves it to Spooner, oh. who threw it away. Oh, God. Threw it away, and Stony Brook will have possession. They're going to dodge the first penalty. Gonzalez yeah. about to be released after his 30 seconds and just 30 seconds more on Palanetti. So one man back into the game for Stony Brook, still playing a man down for the next 25 seconds. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot there. I think, you know, he was trying to feed the crease guy who wasn't, you know, really, really open. I mean, uh, it would have been a really, really beautiful play if he was able to hit him and turn and finish. Uh, you know, uh, that's a situation where, especially on man up, two man up, the ball's more valuable than the play, right? Keep that thing hot, keep it running. And, you know, you've given up two 
uh, there's a great opportunity there that, that's kind of, you know, uh, that offensive flow we were talking about, you know, that goes for man up as well for Coach Bassey. So uh, they're not happy, uh, but we'll see if they can overcome it. Palinetti's penalty is expired. Back to even strength. Blake Balin gets the screen from Palinetti. Give and go. Palinetti ridden outside looking to get that shot off. And he'll keep it outside with Button. 17 to shoot. Will Button over to Matt Anderson. Charging in, and his shot goes high and wide. Stays with Stony Brook, only nine on the timer. It's a good job. Yeah, they, you know, Stony Brook's doing the same thing, too. They're, they're going to pull uh, uh, Anderson off the field and put Christian Loud on with only nine seconds in the shot clock. They'll play, you know, six on four, or uh, four on six, it should be, and Dylan gets rid of it. Yep. Great job, hey, great job by Sacred Heart there. Great defensive stand, you know, they didn't give up too much. Not a great shot. I was worried about, you know, uh, Dylan coming around that corner there, but Ramsey did a really, really good job of slowing him down. But that whole over-the-top look, it seems like that's what Sonic wants to do is attack over the top against Sacred Heart. So both teams scoreless to open up the second quarter. 5-3 to three, Stony Brook, 10-20 to play in the half. Three unanswered at the end of the first quarter, the difference for the Seawolves as Sacred Heart looks to get back to work. Winless on the season, 0-3. Ryan Stout behind the cage. And he plays it back outside for Johnny Morgan. Moving in on Dave Mealy. Under 40 to shoot for the Pios. Morgan in front. And a whistle after the contact. That'll keep it with Sacred Heart. Danny Newton called for the foul. Yeah, that, that, that'll reset the shot clock as well. For, to 60. 60% <clears throat> shot clock reset on the violation. Carson Spooner way out at the 30-yard line. Had a goal earlier in the first quarter. Matched up with Dave Mealy. Some help from Newton. A great Open on the backside. Oh. Michio just swept it on the near post. Wow, what a great look through. Again, the defensive half pinching way to the crease. Um... Michio just <laughs> He's their top goal scorer. Yeah. But unable to convert. Pulled out his nine iron instead of his lacrosse stick, you know? <laughs> he want that one back. I'm sure he'll come over the top next time. Under 30 to shoot on this possession for the Pios. Jake Ward behind the goal. It got deflected by Sabella before it made its way in. Mealy controls. And now the Seawolves will look to clear after surviving a couple of different instances yeah. from Sacred Heart. Yeah. But again, I think if you're Coach Bassett, you're happy with that offensive set, right? Uh, you know, maybe Ward's coming around the goal with 20. Maybe you want to shoot a little less, a uh, little later in the shot clock there. Uh, but uh, Michael Sabella just had to throw it long. It's intercepted by Brandon Sweeney. Yeah, I mean, listen, Coach uh, Gallardi's not happy at all. His midfielders come on the field and no one gets to their spots. They're, they're straight across the midline. Uh, Sacred Heart was able to zone a rider behind them, and he, uh, 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 Mike Sabella had no one to throw the ball to. So he just, he just chucked it down the field because the, the possession clock was almost a 60. Meanwhile, Sacred Heart trying to capitalize after yeah. some good play from its ride. These are the things, right? Taking advantage of the mistakes your opponent, by, your opponent gives you. You know, can we do that? Michael Moreshi controls it. Number 26 here on the near side. Back to Sal Michio. Isolated with Dylan McDermott. Yeah. Coming early. This is what I'm seeing. Throw into that. You know, get that ball moving. Second midfield line trying to do damage for Sacred Heart. Moreshi behind the goal. Here comes Ward. Yeah, you, you hear the offensive coordinator for, for a secret on. Move it, move it. Good save. Saved. Michio couldn't sweep the rebound. What do we got? We got a hold ball going back to Sacred Heart. Okay. Hold on, Stony Brook. Possession, Sacred Heart. New right 60. now, it's the Pios who are getting more possession. We talked with John Bastie about that, Tim. Yeah. They just haven't had much of the ball this season. A big reason why they've struggled. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and this will help them, you know, moving forward, especially in the second half, right? These, these, I mean, listen, these guys are dying to get touches, right? And here you are. 
did a great job on the run. And then it's a hold on Sony Brook, so that kind of helps us out a little bit. But still, you know, can we make the most of our possessions? And so far they have. And hey, give Jameson credit. He's made two big saves, right? I don't know if the other one got to the goal. It looked like it. But uh, this is a great job of creating flow by touches for Sacred Heart. Winded oh, fire goal, it. bottom right corner for Jake Garb. Yeah. A slow lull for Sacred Heart. And they find a goal to get on the board in the second quarter. Yeah, you see Jake come over the top there, right? And you see that, you know, Jameson kind of just threw his left shoulder right at it. He really didn't get his hands to the ball. He didn't drive his hand uh, to get the top of the stick to the ball uh, to catch that one. So he kind of threw his shoulder at it, and it snuck in. Uh, opened his chest up there. But uh, great job by Jake and a good finish. Uh, getting the, uh, uh, the Sacred Heart back to, uh, back to one. Jake Garb, his second goal of the day. At the faceoff X, 7.03 to play in the half. Renz Codlin wins again. Big advantage for Stony Brook in the faceoff X. They are now 9 of 11 as Codlin twirled it behind the net. <laughs> Ambitious again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's funny. So Renz bangs that first one in. Now he's spinning it out. Now, now he's got moves. Had the goal earlier. You just need to see one go in, <laughs> right, right? Right, exactly. Uh, I, if that was a turnover, I'm sure Coach Gillardi would have brought Renz over for a little conversation. Uh, Good save. Paladetti's shot stopped by Alex Pazienza, who was huge in the first quarter. Hasn't had to do much here in the second. That's his 10th save of the game. Yep, clean, nice and clean. There you go. Great job. Good job by Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart looking to tie. Yeah, that was another aspect of the game that Coach Bassey was worried about in their, their first three, right? It was clearing the ball. They were... You know, trying to find the right look, right? And then just, you know, take a deep breath, okay? Uh, don't worry about the possession clock, right? You have plenty of time. 20 seconds is a long time. Tucker Spencer, the man behind the cage, pressed out by Dan Newton. Carson Spooner at the top working on Ben Morshauser. Johnny Morgan, shot bounces wide of net. Sacred Heart still in possession. 29 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, plenty of time. I, I, you know, I, I think that's the thing for, for Sacred Heart is just, hey, listen, just shoot late. I mean, shoot inside of 10 seconds, right? It's not ideal, though, but, right, hey, if we have the ball, the opponent can't, doesn't, can't score, right? They don't have it, right? That's the theory behind it, too, right? Uh, we possess it. We get the most out of it. You know, hey, a good offense is better than a good defense sometimes. Eight on the shot clock. Sal Michio spins it out wide. Carson Spooner's going to dump it back. Empty possession for Sacred Heart content to give it back to the Seawolves. Yeah, yeah. And again, I, I think that's good there. Don't force anything, right? Don't take a bad shot. Don't allow the Seawolves to make a good stop and push in transition. Get a chance to, to set back, uh, get set your ride up, set back a little bit, get a deep ride here by uh, Sacred Heart uh, and see if the Seawolves can find the open man here. So Stony Brook forced to go the length of the field here. Caleb Pearson yeah. absorbs some contact from Palanche. Trots into the attacking half. Noah Armitage. Yep, get them, get their subs on. Pitches it over to Matt Anderson. <clears throat> Stony Brook trying to get its right personnel on. Will Button will join the attack. The veteran yeah. had a hat trick against Penn State in the second game of the season. Anderson, shake and bake around the screen from Armitage. Back to Armitage, saved by Pazienza. Still with Stony Brook, bailing out top. Anderson, shot fake, and misses it. High into the right. Yeah, I don't know if Matt needs to get any closer. You know, I thought he could just step right into that right hand. He's got a big right hand shot. Uh, but, you know, he's down there playing. I'm up here watching, you know what I mean? He's, <laughs> you know, Matt's a heck of a player. Stony Brook keeps it still. Dylan Palanetti. Goal line extended, reverses Anderson. Back to Pellinetti, back to Anderson, lost it. Loose ball scooped up, Huber, button winds and fires, Let's save Pazienza. The ground ball taken by Sacred Heart. Long pole, lost yeah. his stick. Yeah, the ball got stuck in his stick, so that's a violation. The ball will go back right to the Seawolves. Thomas Houlihan, yep. number two, trying to clear it out. And that, that, that should reset the shot clock, right? Reset that, yep, to 80. 
because it's, it's a possession changeover, so it goes to 80, Sam, instead of 60. Uh, Sacred Heart picked the ball up, so that changes it to 80 instead of just a possession shot of a 60. Um, Will Button, he's another guy that they, you know, came in as an attackman, right? Coach Chanachuk had asked him to move to the midfield, and he's really flourished there. Taking advantage, he's a senior. Great personality, big character on the team. Balin, yeah. been quiet today. Blake Balin able to get in there. It's a goal. Yeah, it is a great job by Blake, man. Really tight. You know, he gets above goal line extended. You know, not too much room there. He's able to inside roll here. You'll see it, right? Big turn. Great job. Uh, you know, Pazienza makes a little mistake there, comes off the pipe. The ball goes inside of him, though. But that's a great job by Blake. It's Blake Balin with a goal for Stony Brook. The transfer from LIU. His first of the day. And now Stony Brook leads it by two again. Six to four, 338 to play in the half. Face off, taken by Nikki Cassano. Tries to throw it back. Pazienza's got to keep this in. Oh, that's Empty cage. Oh, that's Houlihan knocked down by Conlin. And the official is going to call it. Yeah, push on. Yeah, it's a push. Yeah, it's a loose ball push on 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 Renz there. So the ball is going that direction. It's going to go back. Sorry, towards uh, Sacred Heart. Yeah, and a new eighty on the shot on the uh, possession clock. So it could have been a disaster there for Sacred Heart yeah. scrambling with the empty cage. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you want to save that there. I don't know if you want to, you know, chuck it back to where you're not looking, especially if you're the goalie. Uh, you know, but they got away with it. So now the Pios could look to move the other way. Houlihan back to Pazienza playing plenty, outside. Plenty of time. Ten seconds in the shot in the uh, possession clock. You got plenty of time. Got to get it over that midfield yeah. line in 20. They do with about four seconds to spare. Yeah, that's what we were talking about uh, two years with Coach Bassey, right? Sometimes when you're clearing the ball, you just got to be athletic. You just got to run by somebody. You know what I mean? Not, not every time you need to throw the ball to clear it. A timeout taken by Sacred Heart. 2.59 to play in the half. 6-4 to four Stony Brook. Sam Niederman, Tim Tuttle, our director, Richmond Boateng, and the rest of our great crew here on Long Island. Glad you're with us. Hope you're having a nice Sunday. Nice weekend of lacrosse. Two teams in the Northeast. Trying to find their way in the non-conference schedule, Tim. It was a tough start to the season for Stony Brook. Mm. Two Big Ten opponents. They go to Rutgers, Final Four team a year ago. They lose at Rutgers. They lose at Penn State. They come back home on Friday, and they get their first win of the year. It's always good to see that first one. And it was an impressive one against Air Force. And as you mentioned, with the quick turnaround, trying to keep that momentum here at home as they try and build out the rest of their non-conference resume. Yeah, no doubt. And I think, you know, Coach Lottie said it yesterday about being healthy, right? They had a full week of practice with everybody. You know, the number ones, uh, you know, the, listen, the number ones are number ones for a reason right on a team, right? The number twos, you know, they help support you to beat somebody. Uh, so Coach Lottie did make another um, uh, comment to us about how, you know, he went down and coached the scout team for the Air Force offense, which really helped defensively. Uh, Coach Browns will come up with a really good game plan to slow down a really, really hot Air Force team. Um, you know, uh, I think I think that aspect plus aspect of getting healthy is tremendous. Well, Stony Brook trying to make it back-to-back -back wins. They beat Air Force 15-8. to And right now they lead it 6-4. to Sacred Heart just called timeout. Yeah, that's a good timeout there, I think Coach Basti, right? You know, you got away with one down the other end. Right? Use your last timeout. You're on inside of three minutes. Uh, won't have another one for the half, though. But if they can get a goal here, right, coming out of a timeout, uh, probably going to want a set play. Um, it'll be worth it. You know, if you get nothing from it, then you wish you had the time back, timeout back. Ryan Stout gives it up to Carson Spooner. Back for Johnny Morgan. 34 on the shot clock, Morgan. Throws it diagonally. Jake Garb working on DeSano, the true freshman. Good job. Just pitches it over to Stout. Here's Morgan. Michio. Tucks underneath McDermott. Finds Stout in front, and his shot got deflected. Yeah, it didn't get through. Newton did a great job of blocking. It was a really nice look by Michio, but just didn't finish there. Dan Newton. The long pole after the ground ball gives it up. Dylan McDermott, he's got some space. Mikey Sabella down low. Balin, what a rip. Nice, nice little tic-tac-toe play here. 
Great job by McDermott coming down the field. Uh, he sees uh, Mikey Sabella at a long pole. Tosses it over to Blake. Blake low to high. Again, Pazienza, not many mistakes today. Slightly off that pipe, and uh, Blake's able to bury it between him and the pipe. Back-to-back -back blasts for Balin. He's got two goals unanswered himself. And Stony Brook extends the lead to three, its largest lead of the game. Face-off won by Cassano. A good win as he takes it himself. Got held up there. The Seawolves get it right back. Conlin. It's Robbie Smith. Timeout, good timeout by Coach. Day. And a timeout taken by Anthony Gallardi. So I beg your pardon, that was Robbie Smith <laughs> at the faceoff X, 35 and 25. Yeah. Similar type of build, the freshman from Huntington. Yep. So Stony Brook will have possession, 145 to play in the half as Anthony Gallardi spends his first timeout. No more left for Sacred Heart, one timeout left for Stony Brook. And see we'll talk things over here with a three-goal lead. Thanks to Blake Balin. We talked about him, Tim, kind of into a new role transferring in to thrust into a dodging role and yeah. starting to get a rhythm with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's been an off-ball player most of his career, so to him to embrace that role and, you know, uh, it really helped out the offense. But two great jobs right there. One you saw is the, the uh, sixth goal of the game. He was a, a one, won his matchup, inside roll, dunked it. And here he can shoot it as well, too, from distance with the last one. So Balin with two goals, Palinetti with two goals. We talked about that too, Tim. How would Stony Brook develop some chemistry mm. with the attack? Dylan Palinetti working with a new pair for the third straight yeah. season, trying to get that chemistry. And that's obviously a huge piece with Anthony Gallardi. Obviously, his offenses at Towson were remarkable. Yeah. Mike Chanichuk, the offensive right. coordinator. That's a big piece of this program's identity. Yeah, no doubt. It, 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 and it takes time, right? I mean, you know, uh, being banged up a little bit and then playing against two really good outside opponents. But the goal is to see a play, right? How are we playing heading into conference play uh, with an automatic qualifier at the end of the road if we're able to achieve that championship uh, trophy? Uh, so this, this, these are very, very good coaches. This is a great coaching staff here, especially on the offensive side. Uh, we don't want to slight Coach Brazel, but the brighter minds might be on the other side of the field. Uh, uh, that's a little dig me and Coach Brazel are good friends. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, that takes time to build, right? So um, a slow process, right, understanding that. And for Coach Shannon Truck and Coach uh, Galani to let the guys know, hey, just keep doing what we're doing, right? The chemistry will build. And here we are uh, with a good performance again. Matt Anderson moving in. Dylan Palanetti behind the cage. It's Balin who scored the last two. Minute 19 to play in the half. 41 seconds on the shot clock. Balin got it again. Wow, he's really starting to heat up now. It's a hat trick for Blake Balin. Three in a row, all of them here in the second quarter. Yeah, he gets his defender hung up. He just turns the corner really good. A good little pick play right there. And he buries another one between uh, Pazienza and the pipe. Um, it's a great little pick play. They come up field, right? Dodge really, really hard. He turns right-handed, um, and he finishes. Uh, that's that's tough. I mean, it's a little stretch here by the uh, Seawolves on uh, on Sacred Heart. I, I don't know that Pazienz would want those three back. He's played very, very well to start the half, so I, I don't want to criticize him too much, though. But I think uh, two of those three he could have had back. Face-off one by Nikki Cassano against Robbie Smith. But Stony Brook gets that ground ball. It's Christian Loud, the long pole moving He'll in. It. He'll shoot it. Gives uh -oh. it up to Palanetti. And another score. Uh -oh. Dylan Palanetti from Christian Loud, and it's four unanswered for the Seawolves. Yeah, uh, you know, this is a great job by Christian avoiding the checks here, and he does the right thing. He gives it back to the best shooter on the field, and Dylan does what he does best. He just, you know, blows it right past Pazienza. I don't know how much, you know, Paz could have done about that, though. I mean, Dylan's a really good shooter, though, but a little quick run here. It's a game of runs, and that's really fast. A, a, a one-goal lead went to uh, five quick. Four straight for Stony Brook. It was 5-4 at the beginning of the quarter after Jake Garb scored for Sacred Heart. But the Seawolves have put together a big response. And now we've got another whistle uh, on the faceoff. I disagree with that call. I think I think Asano did a great job of, you know, uh, that looked to the, to the numbers to me. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know. I think you got to let guys play more. It's, a, it's 60 yards from the goal. And, uh, well, not 60, but 40. Um, I don't know, maybe you hold your whistle there. 
So Stony Brook will have an opportunity here with 34 seconds to get the last shot of the half. Shot clock turned off here. 24 seconds winding down. Stony Brook has scored four consecutive here in this quarter. Derek Takis gets the play moving. 14 seconds. Balin around the goal. Tried to throw it on the other end. Yeah. CJ Harris was there. Nothing doing. Five seconds. Takis outside Palinetti. Two seconds. Got to let it fly here. Oh. And it <laughs> screams over the crossbar. That's how the first half comes to a close. As the Seawolves hit back hard, Tim, 9-4. to four, They lead it going into the halftime. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I don't think Circuit Hard really did anything terribly wrong there. I mean, you know, but, uh, you know, th th listen, it's a game of runs and they play fast and give the Seawolves credit. Uh, on the face effects, I think there were times, if we would go back and watch the film, where the ball's on the ground and, and we just didn't pick the ball up, Sacred Heart did, right? They had a chance to, they just didn't get it, right? And that changed the momentum as well, too. Uh, but listen, give the Seawolves credit. I mean, Blake uh, has, has done phenomenal in the last three minutes. When we come back, we'll hear from the Stony Brook Media Group and have halftime coverage, stats, and analysis. All of that coming your way after these messages. It is Stony Brook Lacrosse here on Flow Sports. Welcome back to Stony Brook, New York. We are here at Laval Stadium about to begin the second half. Stony Brook leading Sacred Heart 9-4. to Sam Niederman along with the coach Tim Tuttle. And Tim, that first half, Swung in favor of the Seawolves as they closed it out. Four unanswered goals to finish the second quarter. And now we'll see how Sacred Heart responds after it was a one-goal game early in that second quarter. Yeah, and you're right. Uh, you know, how can they respond? Oh, Ren's right there. Ren's Conlon. Of... Can he get another one? This time passes for Blake Balin. Nice save. But Alex Pazienza saw it all the way. Good save. Yeah, great save. And, uh, yeah, you know, going into uh, the half, you know, how can Sacred, you know, how will Sacred Heart uh, respond? They've been here before, right? They've had that, uh, leads where, you know, they, can they catch up? Can you play one play at a time, right? So it's one ground ball, one face off, one ground ball, one one, one goal at a time. Uh, it looked like Casianzo stood up like he was shocked the official blew the whistle. But, hey, you got to play the game in Reds down Broadway with a great save by Penzienza to, uh, you know, make sure the lead doesn't get any higher. So Sacred Heart will go to work on offense, trailing by five. They made it a one-goal game, five to four, early in the second quarter, but Stony Brook has scored the last four. Yeah, and you make a good point there, Sam. Remember, you know, they had that that two-man up, right? They, 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 you know, they squandered it. They weren't able to get even a shot off of a tough feed from the wing there. Uh, that could have tied the game there, right? Maybe that changes momentum, but that's in the past. you got a new half here. Uh, it's one play at a time, like I said. It's Carson Spooner who moves in off the wing. Spooner with a shot, and there's the goal for Sacred Heart coming out of the locker room just like they drew it up. Yeah, absolutely. This is a great job, a little S move from the wing here. He gets underneath uh, David Estreller. Uh, Christian Loud comes to help, but he splits the two. And uh, Jameson, he hasn't seen a lot of action, so he could be a little cold out there, right? It's a not, you know, temperatures, uh, you know, uh, well, conducive to Long Island across in February. But uh, yeah, right through his legs uh, for Sacred Heart. Where do you come out of the half? Back to a four goal game. Carson Spooner, his second goal of the afternoon. Renz Conlon against Nikki Cassano in the face-off X, and it's Cassano who gets the win. Can he find a way into the attacking zone? He can. Well, Maybe transition opportunity. The feed, Salmichio slots it in. Back-to-back -back goals for the Pios to start the third. Great job. You know, great job on the faceoff, like I said, you know, uh, to, to win it, Piss Ryan, excuse me. Uh, and they played fast. They, they, that was a great job in transition. Tic-tac-toe, one more, one more, and a great finish. And again, another low to low. You know, J-Mo's got to get his hands to the ball there. Uh, but uh, give the, the Sacred Heart credit, you know, 9-6. Uh, great job. Two goals in the span of yeah. 16 seconds. Here comes Renz. Can he send the tide here? Right Conlon down right again. down Main Street. Save Pazienza. 
Another huge stop by the Sacred Heart goalie. It is his 13th of the game. No, no doubt. And that puts a lot of pressure on him. I mean, listen, obviously Sacred Heart's game plan is we're not going to slide to Renz. We're not going to, and I don't blame them, right? Why would you slide to Renz and give it up and have Palinetti or Huber or, or Bayline shoot the ball? I'm not doing that, right? So that's a lot of pressure on Pazienza to stay tall, stay strong, and take that shot from Renz. Great job by him. Uh, you know, can they get this to a two-goal game? Sacred Heart with another possession. We have not seen Stony Brook really settle in offensively to start this second half. The Pios control it behind the cage. Johnny Morgan circling around, looking for an option. He's got Carson Spooner. Ah. Lost it for a second. DeSanto able to knock it to Palinetti, who controls moving over the midfield stripe. Yeah, unforced turnover, Sam. You know, uh, you got good momentum going here. Pellinetti will track to the corner, just waiting for personnel to get the attackers on there. The first line, Jonathan Huber, along with Blake Balin. And Pellinetti on the attack. It's Armitage, Anderson, and Button, the midfield trio. <laughs> the bread and butter to go to. Uh, you know, I would suspect Stony Brook take the air out here a little bit, right? Two goal lead, excuse me, three goal lead is still a three goal lead. Uh, get the next one. Same applies to them, right? You know, things aren't going your way. Uh, you can't worry about the past. Bailing out top. Armitage finds Button. Saved again. Pazienza sliding over to defend the near pipe. Uh, that's a great tic-tac-toe from Balin to Armitage to Button. I thought, you know, Will could have had a little more poise shooting the ball. I think he just kind of threw it at the goal instead of shooting it into the goal. Stony Brook keeps it on the reset. Balin overthrows Button. That's going to sting him. Look, keep it in play. 47 on the shot clock. Will Button working from below the goal line. Jonathan Huber. Anderson. Matt Anderson. Good luck. In front for Balin. Knocked away uh -oh. to Armitage, Good feeds more. Huber, oh, nice. and it's stopped by Pazienza. Wow. Wow. Oh, man, listen. <laughs> I mean, he's doing everything. He's doing everything but shooting shoot scoring. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Put him on the attack. He is hot. Red, red hot. The Sacred Heart goalie has his bench fired up. They are shouting out to him. 15 saves. Keeping the Pios in this one. Wow, great job. Great job. And good looks, too. That's on the doorstep. I mean, he's not making, you know, shots from a distance. I mean, it saves from distance, excuse me. He's taking shots right on his doorstep. Less than 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. Sacred Heart has scored two goals unanswered to start the second half. Ryan Stout over for Carson Spooner. Gives it up to Sal Michio. Back to Stout. Over to Spooner. It's Jay Garb with it. I like it. I like it. A lot of touches here. 25 on the shot clock. Sal Michio spun out. Jake Ward, 20 to shoot. Ward, Great back to pass. Michio. Good hit. Takes the shot. Lefty shot. Way too high. Just above the crossbar. Sacred Heart in possession. 14 seconds to shoot. And now we got whistles all over the place. Yeah, I got a ball on the field. Right there by the near corner. 12 to shoot. Reset for Sacred Heart. Do they go for it here? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think listen, you, you ride the momentum. A shorty on shorty, turn the corner, find a matchup, get a good shot off if you can. Three good seconds. Look. Okay. Trying to feed it in front for Johnny Morgan. They don't get anything out of it as Michael Sabella controls the ground ball for Stony Brook. Here come the Seawolves. The long pole, Christian Loud. Deals to Caleb Pearson. Pitches it to Blake Balin. And they'll wait for the right personnel to get into the attacking third. Got a penalty marker down on the near side as well. Uh, I don't know. And inverted? Have, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, one of the assistant coaches might have said something that the uh, official didn't like. Because uh, I, 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 they're onside here. I, I have no offside penalty. Uh, I didn't see a push or anything like that in a violation. And that's thrown by the uh, trail official. So uh, a lot of times it's. You know, a communication issue as we're talking, right? Between, uh, you know, coaches to officials, there could be a little breakdown there. The only difference is that, you know, you could be penalized. <laughs> well, that sure. penalty flag is still on the field. John Bassey was not happy mm. arguing with the official. Stony Brook going to work. Kramer for Balin. Threw it way over everybody's head. Yeah, a little mistake there. And now 
We'll get whistles to yeah. check on the penalty. Oh, sorry. It wasn't all sides. Okay, he's uh, he's saying the attackman touched the, touched the line. Okay. I, I didn't think he touched it, uh, but, you know. All right, so offside the call. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Johnny Morgan, 24. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think he touched the line up here, but, you know, like I said, the official's much closer. So I guess the assistant coach was asking him what happened. Uh, Muccio, I'm sorry, it was. Not, Muccio, not, Muccio yeah, 30 not, seconds. Yeah, for all sides. <clears throat> so Stony Brook will have its first man-up opportunity of the day. Dangerous unit here for the Seawolves. No, absolutely. They were three for five um, uh, on Friday. So, uh, you know, and, and, and a little wrinkle here too, you know. I mean, uh, Dylan's playing up top. He was really wide open. Yeah. Armitage, easy work. Yeah. Stony Brook catches in on the man-up. And the Seawolves have their first goal of the second half. Yeah, simple, a little confusion here. Noah just cut straight down the pipe. Uh, number two comes off, and right, and uh, there's no one there to fill the backside. And, uh, Huber does a great job of finding Noah. Uh, we're back to a full goal lead. Second one of the day for Noah Armitage. Comes with the extra man. Michio released after the penalty, back at even strength. 10 to six, 8.45 to play third quarter. Conlon and Cassano going at it at the face-off X. Cassano almost had it. Christian Loud comes up with a loose ball. He had a chance to shoot there, yeah. but Sacred Heart crashed in on him in the nick of time. Yeah, great check, uh, back check by Houlihan, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> it's tough to get those long poles free. I think you don't want Christian to shoot between his shoulders there. Just run down Broadway and nice and tight, but he want to get his hands back. Not too many uh, defensemen are shooting drills in practice, you know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> They're on the other end of the field. Sacred Heart controlling possessions. When we talked with John Basti before the game, he talked about how little of the ball they had seen in their first three losses. Just trying to get offensive opportunities, and Tim, you describe it, trying to get that flow. They found a little bit today as Stout plays it behind. It's Garb. Looking for cutters, dancing behind the cage. Jake Garb pressed out, and a flag as Newton is slashing at him, a second flag. Delayed penalty here, Sacred Heart. Trying to make it as Spooner. Throws it, and it's behind the goal. And now we'll check on the penalties as Newton was Chopping down another tree there. Yeah, I think they're both going to be on uh, Newton. You know, uh, you know, they have to, the the uh, lead officials got one, the trail officials got one. Uh, just a little over aggressive, trying to put the ball on the goal. Right? I don't think, you know, Coach Brazel's going to be too thrilled with that, right? You you want to limit the opportunities for the team, and you know, you don't have to play, you know, take the ball away to play good defense, right? With especially with the shot clock, right? You, uh, I think Sacred Hawks probably got like four or five in the game, right? That's just playing sound defensive uh, positioning. Uh, uh, to uh, to force the offense to really make you know good plays in order to score a goal. That being said, you know athletes are athletes, right? You know Newton wants to put the ball on the ground and give it back to his offense as fast as he can. So yeah. Newton called for the penalty. One minute man up opportunity for Sacred Heart. Yeah, so it's two it's two slashing penalties. Uh, both one it's a two minute foul. What you know one minute each. But uh, if the uh, Sacred Heart can score a goal here, he'll be released. Yeah, Coach Gladys having a conversation with him now about, listen, no need there. Got a hold up here. Right. You want to reset the shot clock? Yeah, yeah. Explaining things to the scorers table, they'll relay it upstairs. Get that shot clock reset. Yeah, it's a sixty. Yeah, it was. It was stuck at fifty-eight. <clears throat> Seven twenty-one, counting down to the third quarter. Ten-six, Stony Brook. Man advantage for Sacred Heart. Two-minute penalty. Two separate one-minute. Yep. Slashing calls on Dan Newton. So a lot of time for the Pios to capitalize. Tucker Spencer. Michio back to Spencer. 
looking to roll on this right side here. Sacred Heart other than Demetrio, they got a bunch of righty shooters. Garb. Garb, yep. Plays it behind for Ward. And again, take your time, be patient, right? Let's work for the best shot, not the first shot. Two minutes, it's plenty of time. I think Coach Bassey would love to get one out of this, right? You got to look at it as getting one, even though it's a two-minute foul uh, on a goal. So that's the, that's the goal. <laughs> Only 11 on the timer. Garb dropped it, and Sabella has it. A good defensive stand for Stony Brook. Yeah, and again, like we talked about flow, right? So they haven't had many touches. So how many fouls have they had against their opponents in the first three losses, right? To get their man up offense really flowing, you know? Oh, what a steal here by Michio. Big Turnover. Deal. Michio has it. Big, oh, Garb. Be, be, be patience. Run your, run your man up. Bounces back to Garb. Remember, still He's man still, advantage yeah, still for man Sacred Heart. Right. 40 seconds left on the penalty. You got plenty of time. Wait. Patience. Patience, Coach. <laughs> Coach Fasty's like <laughs> waving. He's trying to get a, a, an aircraft carrier down. Oh. And now they'll get the extra man. man it's it's right. been five on five for a second. Johnny Morgan there comes in. They've got 23 seconds left on the man advantage. Oh, and they cash in. Sal Michio, the lefty, delivers with the man advantage. Yeah, that's the last three against uh, McLaughlin, low to low. Uh, you know, Michio's two. Uh, so, I mean, you know, uh, J-Mo's got to really get his hands to the ball and drive his hands down to stop that shot, though. But, again, man up, a great job on the steal by Michio, and he, and he ends up paying off with a goal for them uh, uh, by him, Sal. By, it's a good job by Sal. Uh, on the ride to get the ball back and then finishing. So Dan Newton released on the penalty. Sacred Heart does get a goal out of the extra man. They are back within three. 5.42 to go in the third quarter. 10-7 Stony Brook. It's another face-off win. Cassano has really yep. fought back in the face-off oh, department. Stop your feet from moving. Renz Conlin always going to be aggressive. Pesters him on the near side, and it's going the other way to Stony Brook. Yep. Preston Crawl with it. Uh, yeah, Cassano did a great, great job on the face-off win, but instead of trying to push the ball off field, circle back, right, throw it to your defender, your goalie, and then clear the ball. You know, uh, he's tr you know just trying to do too much. A little too much there off the X. Offensive opportunity for Stony Brook. Hat tricks from Balin and Palinetti powering the offense this afternoon. They haven't had too many clear cut possessions here in this third quarter. Sacred Heart has pulled within three after trailing at the half by five. Armitage for Balin. Now Button swooping in back behind Balin. Looking up top, it got deflected by Palanchi. Loose ball, Balin trying to get to it. Scooped up by the long pole for Sacred Heart, and now the Pios can maybe get something in transition. Palanchi chugging on. They sub an attacker in, and Morgan. Michio yeah. around the screen. I, Gonna wait. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, good job, I saw. Good job. Just take the air out of it a little bit here, right? Okay, one goal at a time, right? You can't get to 10 on the next goal, so you might as well just... Take the air out a little bit here. I got plenty of time to go in the game. Uh, great job by Houlihan down there. He, he jumped that lane just as Blake was feeding that ball to number 34. And if that gets through there, it's 11-6. But uh, great job by him. Morgan Inside moving again. in. Oh. Dispossessed. Newton with the disruption. Stony Brook looking to clear. Sabella for McDermott. Across the halfway stripe, and here come the Seawolves looking to get on their correct personnel. Derek Takis will back out. It's a second midfield on here for the Seawolves. Give those first guys a break. CJ Harris controls a sophomore out of Hicksville. Dylan with a shorty. Palinetti working. They'll, they'll come early here. Good luck. Back outside. Kramer for Takis. And he got it. Derek Takis. Great job by Dylan. A little tic-tac-toe play here. Dylan gets it. He's got a shorty against him. The slide comes early. One more. One more over to Takis. And Takis with a good lefty uh, high to low. Uh, I think Paz wants that one back. That's one he should be able to, uh, to handle. But hey. You know, it went in the goal, and we're at 11-7. Uh, 
so good answer by the Seawolves on their second midfield. Got a little production there, uh, which is always a, a good thing. It's Derek Takis with his first of the year, and he is getting mobbed on the sideline. <laughs> His teammates loving it for him. A big moment for Derek Takis. As Stony Brook wins the faceoff with Declan Mitchell. Assisted by number 29, Ronnie Kramer. And the Seawolves will look to settle into the attacking third again. Yeah, you got to shake it off. Uh, you know, uh, they just got to, you know, come out and play good defense here. You know, get the stop. Go down and play offense. Uh, to try and get the, you know, keep chopping away at this lead. Wide open. Huber, top shelf. Jonathan Huber, pinpoint accuracy, and it's back-to-back -back goals for the Seawolves, building out the lead to five again. Yeah, it was a great little job. Noah Armitage makes a great seal on uh, Huber's man, and Huber comes over the top uh, for an easy exchange from Matty Anderson, and he buries it. Jonathan Huber with his second goal of the afternoon. Declan Mitchell will take at the faceoff X again for Stony Brook, the sophomore from Carmichael, California. He jumped. Yeah, Violation on Mitchell. Yep. Sacred Heart takes the faceoff. Yeah, and I like it by Coach Glaudi. Getting, you know, someone out there other than Reds. Give Reds a break. You get a little bit of a lead here. Uh, give Declan some touches. He won the last one and just jumped there a little bit. And that could be a little bit of, you know, excitement. downhill threw it away trying to get it to garb got to keep it in and he shoots along <laughs> that back line just able to keep possession 20 on the shot clock garb jukes inside looking for separation it's ward the luck nice cut. Save. big save mclaughlin <laughs> but the rebound stuck home spencer Tucker Spencer finds some loose change just outside the crease, and Sacred Heart gets one back. Yeah, a little unfortunate there. That, uh, excuse me, McLaughs makes a great save, kicks it out, uh, rebound right back to him. Uh, he's able to shovel it underhand to the goal. So Tucker Spencer scores it for Sacred Heart. His first of the year, junior from Essex, Mass. Mitchell and Cassano in the face-off X. Ball spurts out, and it's taken by Preston Carl for the Seawolves. Throws it ahead, Gonzali. The long pole with the shot, I don't and it know. took a spike into the turf. <laughs> uh, Coach Galati, I think he's, you know, <laughs> got his hands behind his head again, too. <laughs> uh, you know, listen, you know, athletes trying to be athletes, you know, uh, what are you going to do? Um, you know, we've got to lead here. The game doesn't feel too far away, right, Sam? I mean, it's a 12-8 game, but I got to feel like at any moment the momentum could shift here a little bit. You know what I mean? I mean, Sacred Heart came out in the, in the early start the second half really, really well. It's a four-goal lead in the game of lacrosse. Four-goal lead is not much. Well, the shot clock's turned off here. Sacred Heart can maybe try and get one more before the end of the third quarter. 28 seconds to play the third. Behind the net, Jake Ward threw it for Johnny Morgan. And now they try and get one last look at the net. Maybe get within three. Michio. Michio saved. saved by McLaughlin. But the loose ball. Oh, no. Pick it up. Knocked oh, away. Try. And McDermott yeah. controls. Seven seconds. That's Dylan McDermott jogging forward for Stony Brook. Two seconds. Sabella just wasn't able to get anything. Yeah. As Candelito gave him some pressure. And that is the end of the third quarter. Stony Brook able to 
Build the lead back up to four, but Sacred Heart sticking around. We've got the fourth for you coming your way after this. Uh, welcome back here to uh, Laval Stadium. We're waiting for the face-off. Just waiting for the uh, third quarter clock to uh, expire. They have to, uh, excuse me, quarter clock to expire here. All right, well, here we go, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Fourth quarter, four-goal game. Yeah, like I, like I said, it feels like, I mean, you know, if Sacred Car could string a few things together, I mean, give uh, Jamison McLaughlin a great job down there. He saved the ball uh, from uh, Sal Michio with, with 12 seconds to go in the quarter. Um, could be a momentum swing, though. Uh, but, yeah, look for Sacred They're not going to give up, right? They're going to play a full 60 minutes. Coach Bassey's team uh, is a team that continues to work hard, continues to get better, and uh, there's another face-off win. I uh, just got to find some space here, Cassano. Good job. Nicky Cassano clears to Michio. Yep. He's got it in his cross. A big face-off win for Sacred Heart. Just their eighth on 24 face-off so far today. 12-8, to eight, Stony Brook. The Seawolves looking to make it back-to-back -back wins at home to get to 2-2 two and two on the season. Yeah, that's interesting. That's Declan's uh, th third face-off in a row. I wonder if, if Renz is just taking a break or is he uh, dealing with anything. Brian Stout spiked it right on the crease. Yeah. Stays with Sacred Heart. Less than 50 seconds on the shot clock. Had a flag called behind the play, so. I didn't catch it, uh, Sam. I was looking up. A foul called on Declan Mitchell, the faceoff uh, uh, man for Stony Brook. Uh, hold, uh, hold, uh, Sam. 30 seconds for a hold. 30 seconds. So man advantage here for Sacred Heart. Here they come out in their 2-3 look. You know, a little Aussie set, they call it. A little cycle here on the left side. Ooh. Spencer sweeps it wide. Had a goal earlier. Only four seconds left on the penalty. Stony Brook packing it in, trying to kill it off. And they do. Michio down low. Ryan Stout let it rip. Ooh. And it just screams past the net. Yeah, let him step up field a little bit, man. Not a great angle. I mean, when you step into the pass, you know, catch that and let it go. Uh, increase his angle a little bit. But hey, gives the Seawolves credit. Great job on man down. Uh, not too many shots of threat. It, they were both taken from a distance. Uh, one from a poor angle and one, you know, from up top that just screwed wide. Ward, oh, that made it in. That's a goal for Jake Ward. Yeah. Somehow it found its way, and once again, Sacred Heart has the first one of the quarter, this time in the fourth. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think it's a little knuckler. I think uh, it kind of snuck past Jameson. He reacted, and it came out of his stick a little slower than uh, than he had thought it, and it kind of snuck over his shoulder there. Uh, but, hey, good goal. They, they all count, right? Doesn't It doesn't matter how they get in there as long as they get in there. Second of the day for Ward. It's back-to-back -back unanswered for Sacred Heart. Three-goal game again. Yeah, Declan back out there again. Go back, Cassano. There you go. It's Cassano who wins it. <laughs> this less. time playing it to his defense, he'll look to clear. Yeah, sometimes less is more, you know. And again, those face-off guys, you know, their sticks, you know, grab a whack a little bit when they're, when they're pressuring, uh, putting it on the ball or pressuring against the, the, the opponent, you know. So they don't they don't throw as as cleanly as, uh, you know, normal heads just because of the manipulation of the head when, it's, uh, when they're drawing the ball. Not a, I wouldn't say a big possession here, Sam, but this would really go a long way to get a oh, great job. It just seems wow. like Sacred Heart has hung around yeah. today. They've never, yeah. they've been down by as many as five, but they've hung around. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't have a feel to me like they're out of it. You know, I, I just, you know, uh, the sense of it. And again, like I said, it's not, listen, you'd love to get one here, right? It would do, you know, tremendous for them to get within two. Uh, but uh, tough yeah, shot, never made it all shot, the way. Yeah. Preston Crawl sacrificing the body for the Sea Wolves, and now they can potentially find transition. Dylan McDermott. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's not a great take by Morgan there. You know what I mean? The shot clock was not a factor. Um, 
I don't know. I think you would want more out of possession there. Uh, th- that's one of those things that maybe the the ball is more valuable than the play, right? We're trying to make a play. We're trying to get us within two, but you know, again, you know, athletes trying to make plays um, can drive coaches a little crazy at times. Under twelve to play, Stony Brook in control by three. Armitage spinning. This is to Huber, and Pazienza saw it the whole way. He got really hot at the beginning of the third quarter, has a save here in the fourth. Yeah, it's a great job, and Hubes, I'd like to see him change levels a little bit, right? I mean, you know, high to high. You know, listen, as, as goalies, we consider that a high-speed catch, right? We're going we're gonna to decide to just take away the top half of the goal, and if you're going to throw it to us, we're going to catch it. And now. Oh, mm, interesting time, time out, out. Yeah. Time out taken by Sacred Heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 11-13 to play. First time out for the Pios. They have one remaining. So they'll try and draw something up here with possession. Game summary so far. Sacred Heart took the early lead 3-2. to two. But then Stony Brook would score three unanswered to leave five to three at the end of the first. They scored four unanswered to close out in the first half. It was nine for at halftime. Five goal game heading into the break and then Sacred Heart got it back to a four goal game at the end of the third. They have scored one here at the beginning of the fourth to make it a three goal deficit. Blake Balin and Dylan Palinetti each with hat tricks for Stony Brook. A couple of goals for Noah Armitage and the first career goal for Derek Takis. A nice moment for the young sophomore for Stony Brook moments ago. Yeah, good balanced scoring sheet, right? You know, Coach Claudia, Coach Shannon, very happy about that. Maybe to roll over here a little bit. You know, we're, you know, we had a game Friday night, right? We got a game today. Could, could the fourth quarter be a factor about where we are physically? We're a little tired, right? A little banged up from, from the Air Force Academy Friday night. So it'll be interesting this last 11 minutes. A little curious about Coach Basti's time out there. I think he wants to get to two, uh, to a, to a two-goal game as fast as he can. Uh, but uh, let's see if it works out for him. Again, like we say, you draw something up. If, we, if we're successful, great. It's a good timeout. If we're not, then... <laughs> the life of a coach, right? <laughs> right Decision-making right. of a coach. <laughs> right, right. Uh, it's always that one when, the, you know, a guy's coming down the field, he's getting ready to crank the shoot it, you call timeout, and, of course, he lets it go and goes <laughs> in the goal. So, you know, we're not always right, you know, by a long The stretch. no, 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 yes, yes. moment. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. 100%. <laughs> He's the coach, Tim Tuttle. I'm Sam Biederman. 11-13 to play. Glad that you're here with us on a Sunday. Been a good one so far. Stony Brook still by three. Sacred Heart out of the timeout. Back to work offensively. Morgan. It's an early slide there. Show. Oh, Threw it high. Spooner had to jump for it, and he regathers the ground ball. Ooh, Lau got a poke to it. He Doesn't did, know where did. it's at. Oh, he's got Sweeps it. Great it into job the by Christian Loud. Big play by Christian Loud. Wow. Huge play. Yeah, that's frustrating for Coach uh, Bassey. That's not exactly what you're looking for there. Ben you Morshauser wow. rockets it past oh, the, the goalie. net. And Pazienza was able to get back there before Huber, so possession, sacred heart. No doubt. I mean, as soon as that ball goes out of bounds, right, if there's, no, there's not a white jersey below GLE, that's the goalie's ball. They, every referee uh, in the country loves pushing that one, right, which is true because he's the closest guy to the goal, excuse me, to the end line when the ball goes out. Uh, it's a good call by the official there. So a heady play by Pazienza gives his team a possession. Yeah, what a great job by Christian Loud, though. I, I want to give him credit for that a defensive play there. He gets a stick in the lane, then he's able to goose it across the midline. Uh, you know, again, right there, right? So Stony Brook plays fast. They take a shot. Ideally, you want a shot there? I don't know. But you know what? Again, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the game, the game's a flow. You know, you got to let athletes do what they got to do. Ward trying to swim in there and just missed it. Stays with Sacred Heart. 39 on the shot clock. John Murray with it, the freshman from Summit, New Jersey. Looking to work against Newton in the corner. Murray. Uh, Newton's just a workhorse there. He just, well what's inside the rules of the game. Good chop. Ward oh, save. saved McLaughlin. Rising to the occasion, that's a big stop. J-Mo getting it done for the Seawolves in the cage. They haven't needed him as much today, but yeah. called upon there and makes it 
makes it happen. Yeah, good point, uh, Sam. Right, he hasn't to do too much, though, but he's, he's getting it done when he has to. And now Stony Brook can settle in here. The clock is their friend with a three-goal yeah. lead. Nine and change to play. Seawolves looking to make it a 2-0 weekend to get to 500 on the season. They beat Air Force on Friday. Big-time effort, both offensively and defensively. And now looking to beat Sacred Heart. Balin in front for Huber. Missed it high. Still Stony Brook, 33 to shoot. Stony Brook's done a really, really good job of creating offense, throwing into the defense, and then skipping it one more, hitting that over-the-top bomb. Huber oh. right through the wickets. Yeah. Jonathan Huber's got a hat trick, and that's a big one for the Seawolves with 8.38 to play. Right, now I was going to say before, right, Jonathan changes his, his, his angle here, right? He goes high to low, all right, big over the top. Uh, his last three were high to high. Pazienza had no problem saving him. This time he changes levels, gets his hands back, big over the top, right through Pazienza's legs. It's a great adjustment by him. Good shot. Jonathan Huber, who had 95 goals at St. John's, one of their most prolific scorers all time, finished sixth all time in goal scoring with the Johnnies. He comes over to Stony Brook, and he's got a hat trick for the Seawolves today. That big goal makes it a four-goal four game again. Yeah, it's another hold by uh, by Declan there off the faceoff. You know, he's lo he's losing to Cassano, and then he's, he's not, you know, disengaging from him. Uh, and the refs are going to call it every time. You know, you got to, you know, take your losses, get in front of him, play good defense. So that's a holding call on him. That's his second. Michio. Big rip, but yanked it a little bit. Mm. Oh, don't swing yourself back into a double team. Carson Spooner. <laughs> I mean, Caleb and, and, uh, and Christian almost had a field day there. Loud and uh, Pearson. Oh, Ward. nice little tic-tac-toe there, yeah. That make it across, yeah. it did. It's another one for Jake Ward. They'll take it however they can get it. Sacred Heart gets one back, 7.44 left. Yeah, nice little mirror play here. You know what I mean? The ball gets thrown through X after, you know, Sal was going to look like rip it. Um, Ward swings in front. It's a little mirror, and they uh, taps it in, a little, a little tap in. I don't even think he really went in the sticks, Sam. I think he just kind of, like, batted it in. Again, he was hanging around. It's a three-goal game. It's like, it seems like, uh, you know, they just can't get a goal when they need one. Stony Brook puts one ahead, but is the game out of reach with 7.44 to go? A three-goal lead, we say, is not much, though. But, you know, can that swing happen? Right? Can, can uh, you know, Sacred Hop a two together and then see how we respond? Here's Renz back at the X. And won the faceoff initially. Got a hold call against Sacred Heart. It's going to go on Cassano again. So Stony Brook awarded possession. Yeah, and that hold was during the faceoff, so that they, so both teams have one violation each at the X. So you get uh, in the in lacrosse, you get two strikes before you start going foul, uh, unlike baseball. But uh, yeah, it's a tough spot right there to, to get a violation. You just scored. Going to put the Seawolves back on offense, and there's Palinetti. Dylan Palinetti with the goal, yeah. and Stony Brook takes advantage right away. They lead it 14 to 10. Yeah, I mean, they make you pay. I mean, again, I mean, you can't let Dylan Palinelli get to his left hand uh, or do the best you can to not let him get to his left hand. And Dylan does a great job of turning the corner. Dylan does an unbelievable job of being able to get up field and just swinging his shoulders around to get a good look at the cage. So he's, I don't even think he's looking at the cage. I think he just comes around and he just yanks it. He's just unbelievable uh, the way he'd be able to create whip to put the ball high to high there I and mean, give him credit. So, just dodge straight up the field and put the ball in and go, how simple can you get? Well, we were here for his Stony Brook debut yeah. against Sacred Heart, but he had six. He's got four <laughs> in this second meeting. Yeah, there you go. Coach Galati making the adjustment. Puts Renz back at the X. Two face-off wins in a row.
Now Stony Brook can take this clock down under six minutes if they want to. Leading it by four, Palinetti. How about this? He's got 10 goals on the weekend in total. Six against Air Force and four today. <laughs> Talk about punching in, right? No, absolutely, right? You know, I mean, there's no day off tomorrow, but he's, he earned one. Oh, oh it's Andy. Yeah. Top right corner for Matt Anderson. Yeah, that's a good job by Andy turning the corner again. He's another big righty shooter. This is a high uh, off stick side shot by Andy. Great placement in the upper 90 up there. That's a little soccer reference for you. Um, and that's a tough timeout, right? I think Coach Bassett would like to take one now, but he took one earlier, you know, and uh, it didn't work out for them. So you got to kind of ride it here a little bit. The Seawolves starting to break it open. Matt Anderson with the goal. Yeah, the maybe. Fifth year man out of Canada and yeah. another beauty. Coach Gallardi describing him as one of the most underrated midfielders. Not only here in the Northeast, but just in the country, period. He thinks that he's an unsung hero for the Seawolves. Yeah, you know what? I mean, listen, he, he's not flashy, man, right? He just does his job, right? He does the things right that you need to do to be successful uh, as a midfielder, right? Uh, he, he's asked to do, uh, you know, uh, carry the ball a lot, create a lot from the offensive side of the field, dodge hard. I mean, he's probably had about, you know, 10 dodges today really, really hard. He's moved the ball well. Uh, just, a, just a solid uh, player, and sometimes those solid guys that aren't flashy, you know, uh, you know, Sports Center doesn't love them as much as they do, uh, you know, uh, the Joey Spelinas of the world, as we say, right? Joey's a tremendous player, got a lot of flash to his game. Michio. Garb. Stonybrook content to let him run behind the cage. Seventeen on the shot clock. Michio tried to feed it for Spooner, got deflected. Ward will have to regather here. Eight to shoot. Ryan Stout. Oh, he got it. Ryan Stout a nice little sticking shot there, with yeah. it, using the bounce. Sacred Heart will not go away easy here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I know we, it, uh, it's going to be a face off. Okay, I have a flag down, but uh, is the ref, are we calling anything or it was a mistake? The ref's Let's see here. Yeah, I yeah. think we're going to get a call here. I think too. We have a, yeah, I think we have a foul here. Uh, I didn't see it with the initial, because the shot was up top. Goal is good. Zero white slash one minute. So we got Christian, Christian Loud. Loud. Yeah. So we got Christian Loud in a slash one minute after the goal. So this will be a man up face. Okay. Three on two here. Let's see what Cassano. Don't jump. <laughs> Don't jump here. Right. Yeah. Three on two. Let's scrap it out with Renz. Um, They've got the extra man on the wing. That's Jack Carr uncovered number 10 on the near side. Oh, he jumped. Oh, my God. So that will give it to Stony Brook. Oh. They get a freebie playing Nick. a man down. Yeah, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Not the it's not the time to win the faceoff. You know what I'm saying? You want to scrap it out there, 3v2. Uh, you know, uh, that's okay, man. Listen, trying to make a play. And again, we went back to that, you know, coach player trying to make a play. Do we need to, to win there? You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, again, learning experiences. Coach Bassi will... You know, uh, talk to guys. He's, he's, he's done well. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just an unfortunate mistake. John Basti was working the officials there for a second. Yeah. But now Stony Brook, after the win, can hold on here. 30 more seconds left on the penalty for Loud. They can wait to get back to even strength here. Already leading it 15 to 11. Four goals for Palinetti, leading the way for the Seawolves here at home. 4.30 to play, and yeah. just 10 more seconds left on that penalty as Jonathan Huber will get back into the attack, starting to get the ball back to the near side. Noah Armitage comes Huber in strength for the last 20 shot clock. Armitage, oh. somebody lost their cross, ball is loose. And picked up, nice work by Brandon Sweeney, the long pole moving yeah, it forward shot. for Sacred Heart. Sweeney chased down by Anderson. 
Cooper just mishandled the ball. He was ready to let, uh, let that, that ride again. Uh, Numbers, Johnny Morgan moving in, and he gets it. Far post, Johnny Morgan. Able to capitalize. They lost that faceoff with the man up. They get one back at even strength and have pulled within three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a great job to play fast there. I mean, they took advantage of it. They had the, the uh, we thought it was a quick two-on-one. Give Caleb Pearson a, uh, a shout-out to get across, but uh, to play a little defense there. But what a great shot to the opposite uh, side pipe uh, and bounced it right past uh, Jameson. Again, here we are back, right? It's a three-goal game with 3.47 to go. Uh, Stony Brook's going on their runs, but... It's two unanswered for Sacred Heart. Cassano against Conlin in the faceoff X. And this time, Cassano scoops it out. So he gets a key win and keeps Sacred Heart alive. They've got 3.37 to play, trailing by three. Oh, we got a lead here. Morgan, who just scored, oh. shelled down by Sabella. Penalty marker out. Delayed penalty here. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to check the replay. I, th I thought that was a good hit by Mike, but, uh, you know, a lot more up here, Sam, right? You know, I mean, it looked, it looked clean to me, but, you know, the official throws his flag and we'll play on. Trying to feed it in front for Ryan Stout, and now that Stony okay. Brook has possession, will get the call. Yeah. Not, not, not a terrible decision there, right, to try and force feed it, Sam. You know what? I mean, the clock, you want some more seconds on it. You don't want to waste this time with the possession, right? Uh, yeah, he's got to push. He's calling Sabella for a push from behind. Uh, again, we don't get the replay, but uh, it looked clean. But anyway, you got to play off from there. Uh, not a bad decision to force that day to try and score a goal right away because uh, you'd rather play man up as soon as you can, right, with the advantage here. But 3-0-3 three, three, oh, three to go, down by three. 30-second penalty on Sabella. Man up for Sacred Heart. Three minutes to play, three-goal deficit. Tucker Spencer fakes the pass, now plays Spooner. Yeah, I'd like to see a little more movement here on the man up, right? Get get the uh, the Seawolves moving defensively, right? Get them rotating, making exchanges. Oh, good save. Spooner was looking top left, yeah. but McLaughlin denies him with the save. You know, uh, you really can't blame that. that, that oh, they threw it away here. Uh, Stony Seawolves Brook, said, yeah. Unforced turnover. It'll go the other way to Sacred Heart. And Anthony Gillardi yeah. is 15 <laughs> yards on the field, wants a timeout. <laughs> the timeout taken by Stony Brook. And a little bit of the momentum back to Sacred Heart. Still a three-goal game, but 2.24 to go. And they'll have the ball after the timeout taken by Anthony Gillardi. Yes, yeah, Sam, I think, that, I think, you know, Coach Bassey, you know, if they're able to pull it out, terrific, right? They're a great job, but I think much better flow today, right? Offensively, right? I think, you know, they've struggled to put the ball on the goal. They've only had uh, three games, one with five goals, one seven, one five, you know, so they've never put more than seven goals in a game up, and here they are with a good flow uh, offensively. I think it's something to build on moving forward. No doubt a lot of fight showed by Sacred Heart. 0-3 on the season. Had taken three lopsided losses to open up the year, but this by far their best game of the year performance-wise. And Stony Brook just trying to land this plane here with 2.24 <laughs> left. Yeah. Seawolves want to get back to 500, make it 2-2 two and two on the season. Yeah, I mean, and listen, playing, you know, two games in three, as we said, you know, a quick turnaround. Coach Boyle's not going to make any excuses, right? I mean, uh, you'll, you'll break down the film tonight, and, and you're going to go, hey, they're should have done this, you know, do better this, you know, and I think, I think the, uh, you're always trying to learn, right? You're always trying to get better. It's hard to do it in-game, right? Because in-game is about adjustments. When you start to break the film down, right, both teams, right, they're going to take this and they're going to build on the positive, and that's all you can do. But, you know, the negatives we try and correct a little bit, but what, what did we do well, and how do we bring that to our next game? So Stony Brook, remember, threw it away on the clear. Yeah. So Sacred Heart. We'll start with possession here out of the timeout. Each team has one timeout remaining. 2.24 to play. 15-12 to the Seawolves. David Bartkus has it on the far side for Sacred Heart. 
Ends up with it, the goalie handling yeah, it, it in the outfield. It, sh it should be fairly easy. They're, they're up. There you go. Okay. Yeah, how, how much cross. time is a foul, though? But the, it is, uh, they're still up. Oh, no, the penalty's even? Oh, we're even. Okay, my bad. Oh, what a great look. Spooner oh. looking for Carb. Yep. Thought he had him there. McLaughlin had that post covered. It's Michio under two minutes to go. Wow, Morgan. Whoa. Morgan moving in. That's knocked down foul. by Caleb Pearson, and another mm. flag's out. Another flag. They're going to get Pearson on that. Come on, go to the goal. Go, you got to go. Come on, come on. It's Ward. Clock running here. 136 left. Okay. And Not McLaughlin it. able to body it up. Sean Conk gets the loose ball. Now we'll get the penalty call. Just a minute 31 to play in the game. Another penalty on Stony Brook. It's Caleb Pearson. And it'll be another man advantage for Sacred Heart. 30 seconds on the penalty. Here we go. 1.30 to go. And the Pios make it interesting. Oh. Too high. Looking for Spencer. And that's going the other way to Stony Brook. Sacred Heart squanders the chance. Yeah, and, and I think that's something that Coach Massey will look at, right? They've, they've had probably, I mean, the third quarter stats had him at one for four. I think there's three penalties in this, right? They got nothing out of it, so one for seven. Again, that offensive flow we talked about, you know, that, that you know, that equates to uh, man up opportunities too, right, Sam? Um, you know, it didn't look like, you know, Sacred Heart did too much changing their shape, uh, uh, man up. Uh, so, uh, again, it's a work in progress. Well, that should do it. Stony Brook has it. They can play catch with it for the last 44 seconds of the game. The Seawolves led pretty much wire to wire after the first quarter. They trailed early 3-2. to two. Yeah. It was a two-goal game at the end of the first, and Sacred Heart cut it to a one-goal game to begin the second, but they never got any closer. Yeah. The margin's been three the rest of the day. Palinetti for Armitage looking to put some icing on it, but he throws it behind. <laughs> Still the seal yeah. zero. 18 seconds left. The shot clock. Yeah, you just not looking to get anybody get hurt, you know, here. Yep. You, know, you don't want to both teams. The clock is running. Uh, I don't think the officials realize it. Palinetti will just keep it behind the cage. Sacred Heart has called off the dogs. Well, hang on a sec. We gotta... yeah, the, clock, the clock ran for a little while. Yeah, they got to reset things here to get the game clock right. They had it going there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? Because, you know, often no was shot, right? It tipped off. Uh, so they're looking to uh, reset the shot clock. You know, Pazienza made a save there. So uh, so it, it's true. The officials are wrong to get a new 60. But, yeah, we're at 12.8, I think, on the clock. 12.8 okay. seconds. Just making sure everything's technically sound down the stretch. Anderson finds some space. Yeah. He'll circle around. There you go. And that'll do it here at Laval Stadium. Anderson tosses it into the air, and Stony Brook is back at 500. The Seawolves win it over Sacred Heart, 15 to 12. Yeah, I, you know, listen, uh, a, a really good solid effort for the Seawolves coming off of the FOS game, a quick turnaround. Uh, but I think if you coach Bassey, you're happy about how your team played. I think I think they got better today, right? And that's what you can ask for your team, right? Is try to get better every day in practice in a special game. So they got better today. I also think the Seawolves did too, right? They were able to battle through some adversity of playing you know two games in a short period of time uh, and they got better today as well sacred heart drops to zero and four with the loss next up they play drexel on saturday their first home game of the year meanwhile stony brook two and two the seawolves two in a row they take the weekend beating air force and sacred heart they will be back at home this coming Saturday against Brown, a ranked team, a very good team out of the Ivy League. Yeah, I mean, that Ivy League, you know, there's some really, really good teams in there. You know, Brown, Yale, Princeton had a tough day yesterday against Maryland, though, but it'll be a tall test for the Seawolves. Let them get healed up, you know what I mean, and get a week to prepare, uh, you know, because it'll be a good Brown team coming in here. We'll see if Stony Brook can keep the winning ways. They win it today. Again, the final 15-12 to 12 
Stony Brook over Sacred Heart. Well, that'll do it for us, Tim. Always a pleasure, my man. Yes. Great to be in the booth with you again. Great to see you. As uh, Stony Brook wins it, and we say goodbye. Hope you have a great rest of your afternoon for our entire crew, led by director Richmond Boate, Brian Kazax. For Tim Tuttle, I'm Sam Niederman. Have a great rest of your weekend. We will talk to you next time.